So my name is Dr. Grant Pagden, uh, and my specialty is anti-aging and regenerative medicine. So I got into the field of anti-aging medicine uh, about six years ago when I was the medical director at iQuest Healthcare. And uh, the vision there was to uh, make uh, lifestyle alterations to move people's health forward, which re re really seemed to be a very proactive approach and a preventative kind of approach. So that's kind of where my interest started. I, uh, I got board certified with the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine, which was a two-year process, a bunch of education, some written exams, and some oral exams. And from there, uh, my interest really kind of moved into uh, more of the regenerative side of it because a number of people find their, their physical activities to be curtailed by uh, degenerative arthritis and chronic sports injuries and things like that. So uh, I wanted to try to devise a method for addressing some of these problems uh, and the, the options unfortunately are rather limited. A and unfortunately until recently there hasn't been a lot that we could do to try to reverse degenerative arthritis. Uh, so this is really where my interest in stem cell medicine as a tool for regenerating some of these degenerative conditions came about. We do have all of the things in our body that we need to heal up the joint. The problem, of course, with a joint with osteoarthritis is there, there really isn't a good way to get all those growth factors in there. There's very little blood supply inside the joint. The center portion of the cartilage of the joint really has very little blood supply. So although your body has good intentions of trying to heal itself, Arthritis is unfortunately one of these degenerative conditions. Once it gets a foothold, it's going to gradually spiral downwards. That's why your orthopedic surgeon will say, come back and see me in five years and you'll need a new knee. He can tell looking at the x-rays where you are now, he knows where you're going to be in five or ten years. So, so the way that we get around that is by actually introducing these factors right into the joint where they're needed, we can encourage the healing without relying on external blood supply to, to bring the factors in there. We actually import them directly, throw them into the joint and allow them to do their thing. So uh, the type of patient that comes to my office these days is a person in their, I'll say, you know, middle years to, to uh, er early sort of retirement years. These are people that are interested in optimizing their health, optimizing their performance. Uh, they're interested in continuing to be active, productive, vigorous members of society and, uh, and looking for some strategies for uh, not just prolonging their life, but uh, enhancing the quality of their health. So in terms of trying to find some evidence to support the, the, the field of regenerative medicine, it, it's an area in the medical literature that is really exploding right now. There's tons of interest. It actually started in the dentistry field more than 15 years ago. Then it made its way into orthopedic medicine and plastic surgery in the mid 2000s, so since about 2000 to 2005. And, uh, and, and so there are increasing volumes of papers and research and interest coming through in the medical literature now, uh, so that this field is really an area that's, that's beginning to explode. The science of stem cell medicine is still in the early stages though. So a lot of the stuff is just primary research. Some of it is observational trials and small groups of patients, that, you know, that we're starting to see these kinds of reports coming out in the literature. But because it's been around for almost a decade now in, in um, traditional medicine, uh, we are seeing some papers now that are, are, are showing evidence of 10 years of follow-up. Patients that have been treated, say, in 2005, now followed up 10 years later. So there's really some good, um, stuff emerging in the medical literature. Uh, these procedures that I perform are still considered to be experimental, however. So when a patient comes to see me for an initial consultation, they're interested in knowing how exactly do we perform these procedures and what kinds of risks would they face. So there would be three procedures in the, in, in the full stem cell package that a patient would uh, uh, come in for. And each of these procedures takes approximately an hour. The first one is to draw some blood to obtain platelet-rich plasma. We need about two ounces of blood. We prepare it in a special container. We spin it in a centrifuge and it automatically decants off the red blood cells, 
the platelet-poor plasma, and we are left with a platelet-rich fraction. The second uh, procedure is trying to obtain some stem cells from fat. So the way we obtain that is we inject some freezing through a little hole that we poke in your flank. We inject some freezing and then we have a small little catheter that we insert that sucks out a little bit of fat. But there's, there's uh, certainly plenty of uh, local anesthetic such that the procedure is not particularly painful. The third procedure then involves trying to harvest some stem cells out of your bone marrow. And people hear bone marrow and they think, oh my gosh, it's, that's going to be really uncomfortable. Uh, I actually find in my experience that people find the aspirating of the fat to be a little bit more uncomfortable than aspirating the bone marrow. So it's not really that big a deal. Uh, we put some freezing into the surface of the bone and with a tiny little trocar, we poke a hole and we suck out about two ounces of bone marrow. So it's not a huge volume that we need. Uh, we pull the trocar out and again, we, you, where that area will be covered with a sterile dressing. Then the bone marrow is prepared in the same way that we prepared the platelets. It goes into a special container, it goes into the centrifuge and it spins down and, and, uh, and we purify out the stem cells. So I'll end up with three vials sitting on my tray for my procedure. I'll have a vial of platelet-rich plasma, I'll have a vial of fat, and I'll have a vial of bone marrow. So like any surgical procedure, there are some risks. And so patients are quite interested to know what exactly are the risks. First of all, you're going to experience a little bit of discomfort. Uh, some people don't like having their blood drawn. Some people that can make them feel a little bit faint and uh, lightheaded. They would have the opportunity to lie down or have a cool cloth on their head. And this is usually a feeling that passes quite quickly. With the, uh, the other procedures like obtaining fat and obtaining bone marrow, we're fairly generous with our use of local anesthetic. So as long as a person doesn't have any kind of an allergic reaction to local anesthetic, this is usually a very effective way of making sure that the procedure is only of minimal discomfort. After we draw the fat though, there can be some bruising in the flanks and uh, this can be minimized with a little bit of a pressure dressing. So sometimes we'll ask people to have some fairly snug fitting clothing. We, we always put some good uh, solid dressings on there. For the women, they might want to wear like a control top pantyhose or uh, even like a Spanx kind of um, a uh, compressive uh, sort of lycra tights or something like that would be helpful. So that would minimize any bleeding or bruising. The, uh, the other uh, aspect, of course, is any time we stick a, an implement into a person, we could be introducing some infection. So uh, we do a number of things to try to limit the chance of infection. One other thing to keep in mind is that our platelet-rich plasma preparation does contain white blood cells. So when we're sticking that into a joint, in the rare event that some bacteria got introduced, there's white blood cells in there to right away kill it. So the risk of infection in your joint from this procedure is less than one in 50,000. In order to connect with me, a patient doesn't have to have a referral from their own family physician. They can give us a call and, uh, and arrange an appointment to sit down at no cost to discuss uh, the possibility of some regenerative medicine for their arthritic uh, joint. Uh, I like to see some imaging of the joint either some x-rays, CT scan, or MRI. I also like to see a basic blood panel that shows their hemoglobin and their platelets. I just like to make sure that they have enough hemoglobin and platelets to be able to tolerate uh, donating a few. Uh, and so once we've had a chance to discuss with the patient the options, the alternatives, and the risks, uh, then we, 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 we have a look at the images and the blood count and make a decision about what would be the most appropriate package in terms of the giving the best options of regenerating that joint.